Imagine you have lost your wallet. You have lost access to any documentation that could prove your identity. You have no bank account, no credit cards, no degrees to prove your education, your medical history, the property you own, everything you once had can no longer be linked to you. Are you panicking? Wait. You find yourself in a strange land, far away from the people who knew you. And in this strange place, it's your home now. And you know that you must adapt and make the best out of your new situation. You're still the same person. You have the same skills, the same hopes, and dreams as before. But in this new place, you no longer have access to the people, places, and the resources that made your life. And since you have no verifiable ID, recreating your identity is impossible. This nightmare is a reality for millions of people today. And it was for me and for my family. I was 12 years old when my family fled from war in Somalia, heading to the Kenyan border, leaving everything we had behind. In my neighborhood in Mogadishu, Somalia, both of my parents were very successful business owners. We lived in an affluent neighborhood where I played soccer every day. I think you can kind of guess, right? Um, <laughs> We played soccer, I played soccer every day and really lived in a peaceful life. But once we arrived in Dadaab, Kenya, at the world's largest refugee camp, I was no longer Hamse, son, friend, brother, aspiring soccer star. I was zero, zero, Three, four, seven, one. That was my identity. Over the three and a half years that I've lived in Kenya, in Dadaab, Kenya, I learned that even my refugee camp identity had no permanence. And through this process, we lost our dignity. When my family was moved to another camp, the same process of review and documentation will repeat. We would be assigned a number to collect my family's portion of food, clothing, and medicine. And without any record, it did not matter if we had already received the vaccine, it was given again. From the moment we arrived in the Dab Ravichi camp, we were reduced to just a number without any of the meaningful transaction history that we had accumulated before the war. We lost all of it. It was like starting life all over again and again and again. This lack of verifiable economic identity is preventing millions of refugees today, and more broadly, over, over two billion people who live in extreme poverty, to participate and contribute to our global economy. Due to the haste of their flight and lack of identity across borders, refugees arrive in camps or other countries with no history. And without this vital information, they have difficulty in obtaining meaningful work or financing because employers and financial institutions cannot assess their skills or credit worthiness. Let me share with you the story of Halima. Halima has been living in one of the camps in Kenya since when she was a child. She's from Somalia a mother of two children, and she completed 
a job training program with an NGO in the camp. She earns money as a small business owner managing her own market stall. Halima, for the past 17 years, which is, by the way, the average number of years that the refugees spend in camps. Just imagine that, 17 years. Halima has received 17 loans and fully repaid to the microfinance institutions that she borrowed the money from. Clearly, someone with a long history and, and credit. Halima has three separate ID cards for different purposes. One from the NGO that she receives health services from, the UNHCR card, ID card, and one from the local host government, interior ministry of the local government. None of these three separate ID cards work together or even share information. For refugees, it's as though there is a reset button on their head. Every night signals the end of an identity. Every morning, they start all over again with their achievements of the previous day completely wiped out. I'm here today to share with you a new exciting innovation that is solving this global challenge. Three years ago, I met my business associate and his longtime friend, and together we had a shared vision to develop a revolutionary digital identity platform that would allow refugees, women farmers, people who are excluded from our global economic ecosystem to have access, gain access to the global economy. Soon after, BankQ was born. BankQ is the first digital economic identity platform harnessing the benefit of a distributed ledger Bank you provides an ID that is linked with the critical information, such as health data, education records, which is an economic asset, property records, and things like that. Even uh, financial support from family, family members overseas, like myself, which can show a source of stable income. This Bank you ID linked with this critical information, is completely owned and controlled by the user who creates it. It provides 100% privacy, and the user decides who to share information with and when. You might be asking, what is blockchain I just mentioned, or how is this possible? In simple terms, Blockchain is a new type of application or a ledger that stores a permanent data which can be shared without requiring central administrator. This is in big contrast in our traditional databases, which is controlled and owned by one single administrator. Let's go back to the story of Halima to see how this can transform her life. With a bank ID, Halima, for the first time, has her data stored in one place. And for the first time ever, Halima is empowered to control her data, rather than be at the mercy of other, others who each control a piece of her data. Halima decides who comes part of her network. She decides who gives to access, when to remove an access. And because all of the data points are connected in one place, Halima is able to build a transaction history and build a credit profile. Now banks can see Halima as a potential customer rather than a pity taker. 
because her skills and credit worthiness can be assessed. Halima can get loans. She can consider expanding her business. And all the humanitarian organizations that serve Halima can now access her data with her permission all in one place, improving their efficiencies and cutting wasteful duplicate spending. Imagine that. So you might think this is kind of you know fantastical future state. This is happening as we speak, and Banky is operating this in seven countries. And it's not only the solution is not only for refugees, it's for women farmers, it's for our homeless population who are invisible in our global economic ecosystem. When we become collectively committed to a better outcome for all of our citizens, global citizens, there is no limit to what we can accomplish. I believe that deeply in my heart because in spite of fleeing civil war, experiencing the mysterious death of my father and relatives, coming to a foreign country with no language and culture, maybe a few bad words of English, but uh, <laughs> I'm here speaking to you today. Let's say yes to dignity through identity.